Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's news, a transgender cyclist who won his second world title on Saturday has blasted Donald Trump Jr. for fueling the flames of hatred and encouraging hundreds of people to send her hateful and transphobic comments online. Rachel McKinnon won gold in the 35-39 age category 200 meter sprint at the Masters Track World Championships in Manchester on Saturday. But 48 hours later, she suggested her victory had since been dampened by an abundance of hate messages she'd been receiving on Instagram, Twitter and email. They're flooding my IG with hate speech, McKinnon tweeted Monday afternoon. That usually means that some right-wing outlet published something hateful. An hour later, McKinnon tweeted again, this time quote-tweeting Donald Trump Jr.'s outburst against her victory. You can never be woke enough. The president's eldest son tweeted in response to a town hall article claiming McKinnon would not have qualified for the men's championships. Sorry to all female athletes who spent their lives mastering their games. McKinnon responded, oh this explains the explosion of hate messages I'm getting. Hours earlier in a separate tweet, Trump Jr. also branded the idea of trans women being eligible for com to compete alongside female-born athletes as BS. This BS will destroy women's sports and everything so many amazing female athletes have worked their entire lives to achieve, he blasted. I couldn't care less how you identify, but this isn't right. When another Twitter user said that ultimate male privilege is men being able to dominate women's sports, all the gains women have made toward equality flushed, Trump Jr. responded, it's funny because it's true. Sad. Before the race, McKinnon told Sky News, all my medical reports say female. My doctor treats me as a female person. My racing license says female, but people who oppose my existence still want to think of me as male. There's a stereotype that men are always stronger than women, so people think there is an unfair advantage. By preventing trans women from competing or requiring them to take medication, you're denying their human rights. When asked if it was possible that she had a physical advantage as a trans woman, she admitted that, yes, it's possible, but there are elite track cyclists who are bigger than me. There is a range of body sizes and strength. You can be successful with massively different body shapes. In many Olympic disciplines, the gap in performance is bigger between first and eighth in a single sex event than it is between the first man and the first woman. On Sunday, McKinnon accused fellow competitor Dawn Orwick, who was cycling for the US, of refusing to touch her on the winner's podium, opting instead to hold her left arm behind her back. McKinnon said, third place, Kristen wore my sport is a human right sticker as a sign of sol solidarity. Second place kept her distance and put her hand behind her back as her own sign, signifying something like poor sportsmanship. Dailymail.com has, con has contacted Dawn Orwick for comment, but she hasn't spoken out against McKinnon's win or made a comment about transgender athletes competing against women who were born female. Other women who have been beaten by McKinnon have also said she has an unfair advantage. After McKinnon won her first world record last year, third place finisher Jennifer Wagner said losing to her was unfair. McKinnon hit back by pointing out that the pair have cycled against each other 13 times and McKinnon has only won twice. The woman who placed third on Saturday, Danish cyclist Kirsten Harup Sovang, has said she fully supports McKinnon's win. She told Mail Online, Rachel McKinnon was the strongest woman in the competition. She won fair and square. I strongly support women's rights and equality in all aspects. That is every woman, no exceptions. I know she wasn't born a woman, but she is a woman now and she fulfills the demands for testosterone levels set to compete. McKinnon started her sports career after transitioning in 2012 and has been criticized ever since by pressure, groups and top sports women. They said she has an unfair advantage because her six feet frame inherited from when she was a male gives her more muscle mass. Among her critics are pressure groups fair play for women and save women sports. Martina Navratilova, an athlete who, who was beaten by McKinnon last year and a leading woman cyclist. Top British cyclist Victoria Hood also criticized McKinnon, saying that her transgender status gave her an unfair advantage against women who are born biologically female. She said, the science is there, the science is clear, 
It tells us that trans women have an advantage. It is a human right to participate in sport. I don't think it's a human right to identify into whichever category you choose. Dr. McKinnon announced she was transgender in 2012 and started competing in cycling events in 2015, rapidly rising to the top of the sport. Last year, she broke her first record at the 200m sprint at last year's UCI Masters World Track Cycling Championship and also won the event in the 35-44 to 44 age bracket. Dr. McKinnon responded to Miss Wood's comments with a statement that revealed they have never competed against each other. We are either full and equal women or not. We are. In December last year, Dr. McKinnon clashed with women's tennis great Martina Navratilova who said that allowing transgender women to compete in sport against people born as women was insane and cheating. McKinnon called her transphobic and Navratilova responded, McKinnon has vigorously defended her right to compete, pointing out that, when tested, her levels of testosterone, the male hormone, were well within the limits set by World Cycling's governing body. Nevertheless, at 6 feet tall and weighing more than 14 stone, she appeared to have a substantial advantage in muscle mass over her rivals. After last year's UCI Masters Track Cycling World Championships in Los Angeles, the third place finisher Jennifer Wagner said losing to Dr. McKinnon was unfair. McKinnon responded to point out that she and Wagner have raced 13 times in the past and Wagner beat her 11 times. She said at Masters Worlds, she beat, uh, she beat me in the 500 meter TT. She beat me in 6 or 7 races at the 2017 Intelligen Intelligentsia Cup. In 2016, she beat me in all 3 speed week crits. She's won 11 of our 13 races. And it's unfair, excuse me. In March this year, Paula Radcliffe, who, was, who has held the women's world marathon record since 2003, said, There are absolutely probably hundreds of transgenders who want to take part in sport for all of the other benefits that it brings. And all we're saying is, that's fine, but not elite sport. McKinnon then accused Radcliffe of spreading irrational fear. Olympic swimmer Sharon Davis, who won silver in 1980, has also spoken out about transgender women being allowed to compete. She said, I believe there's a fundamental difference between the binary sex you are born with and the gender you may identify as. To protect women's sport, those with a male sex advantage should not be able to compete in women's sport. McKinnon hit back in Davis by calling her a transphobe and accusing her of sharing hate speech. She said, there is no debate to be had over whether trans women at least have an unfair advantage. It's clear that they don't. Since the November 2003 IOC policy openly allowing trans women to compete, not a single trans athlete has even qualified for the Olympics, let alone won a medal. Dame Kelly Holmes spoke out earlier this year against transgender women being allowed to compete against, women, against people who were born biologically female. And in response, McKinnon tweeted to call her extremely transphobic before blocking the two-time Olympic gold medalist on Twitter. Holmes responded by saying, If this subject is open to debate, then why have I been blocked? As far as I am concerned, you are going about this in the wrong way. Calling me transphobic is just ridiculous. Far from it. I have an opinion you don't like, that's that. British cyclist Victoria Hood continued her criticism of McKinnon by saying, The world record has just been beaten today by somebody born male, who now identifies as female, and the gap between them and the next born female competitor was quite a lot. The world record has two tenths of a second. I know that doesn't sound like a lot, but it is. The gap between them and the next female competitor was four tenths, which to put into perspective in a sprint event like this, that would be 15 meters of the track, when sprint events are usually borne by centimeters. As well as releasing a statement which pointed out that her new record was still behind several others set by athletes who were born biological females, she also took to Twitter. She wrote, many, claim, many people claim to support trans women, but often they only support us until our lives impact them in a meaningful way. In my case, people literally say they support trans women, but not in sport. There can be no but. We are either full and equal women or not. We are. Transgender athletes have been allowed to compete in the Olympics since 2004 if they have undergone gender confirmation surgery and been on hormone therapy for two years. 
In 2015, these rules were relaxed to remove the need for surgery and athletes must now have a testosterone level below 10 nmol for at least 12 months prior to their first competition. That is it for today's news guys, thank you so much for watching, goodbye.